Welcome everyone. Excellent, excellent. I hope everyone has uh, had a great week. Uh, please be seated if you're standing. Those of you who are watching, welcome to the Peaceful Solution Character Education Teacher Certification class. And we're going to be continuing on here in the uh, unit one here of the character unit. Um, we're in chapter four, actually. We're going to be picking up on page 89. Uh, but before I get started, uh, going a little bit off of last class, Williams' class was the last one that we covered there. Uh, just a show of hands, you don't have to answer out loud. Uh, anybody who had to deal with any uh, curveballs or pitfalls this week? Any setbacks this week? <laughs> you know, the, anything that tested your resolve to maintain a positive character? Now, notice I didn't say any one, right? <laughs> but anything, because... You know, like uh, was talked about from the previous teachers, you know, every day we're going to be faced with situations that are going to do that very thing. That is going to test our resolve to, of course, what we're covering in this chapter, maintain a positive character. Okay, and of course, you know, we're going to have ups and downs. You know, we're going to have our great days and we're going to have our not so great days. You know, if we were to look at our behavior and plot it on a graph chart. Hopefully, you know, even though we have ups and downs, hopefully it's trending upward, right? Uh, and not going down, completely down. Like you look at, uh, if anybody has ever invested in stocks, you know, stocks are going to have their ups and downs over a period of time, depending on how, how the market fluctuates. But you want it to trend upwards. And that's what we want our character to do. We want our character to trend upwards. We want to see the series of choices that we're making trend upwards and as we relay this information to the students you know we want to make sure that they're keeping in their minds you know and as we, we covered a little bit last class we're going to cover some this class you know that they're not discouraged when things don't always go as planned because things won't always go as planned sometimes they will have those off days okay but they can't allow those things to cause them to as we're going to talk a little bit a little bit here uh, toward the bottom of the page you know kind of wallow in the mud all right, and that can be very easy to do, especially when you're learning something new. Every single one of us has been faced with learning a new skill or learning a new uh, trade or, or information, and it sometimes it it might be hard to catch on at first, and it can be a little bit frustrating, especially if we see other people catching on. We're still a little bit behind, but we just keep pushing. We encourage them to continue to push. We encourage them to continue to. To, to study and apply this information and to value it, right? The more they value it, the more they're going to go back to it to refer to when they're faced with a problem, when they're faced with a, a conflict, when they're faced with a negative influence being uh, presented to them in the form of a friend or a family member or, or music or video games or movies or whatever the case might be. Because what they're doing here is is they're taking all of this information that they've gained from the very first page that we covered and they're building it up like we continue to talk about it's it's a, these are building blocks building it up to maintaining it because that's something that they're going to have to carry with them uh, throughout the rest of their life you know it's not like a, a, a one and done or a, you know a do it and for rinse it and forget it type deal this is something that we have to continuously maintain uh, in regard to our character which which means we have to go back and study the information uh, you know, we might forget something that we learned because we haven't been tested in that in a long period of time. Okay, and, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, it's taking a step back from uh, a conflict and giving it a little bit of thought. You know, so that we don't, as William covered last class, uh, react impulsively. You know, respond impulsively. We want to consider the consequences of the decisions that we make because as it's important to reiterate to the students because a lot of times a lot of things that they see coming from influences from the movies and the and uh, um, the internet and video games they don't always see the consequences that come with making certain choices so we have to reiterate into their minds and help them to realize and this is something that as adults for the most part uh, we we know we realize that there are going to be consequences to the decisions that we make, to the things that we do. Um, you know, and I was thinking about um, uh, just just something generally uh, speaking, building, right? Carpentry, 
you know, and I and I'm no carpenter, no builder. You know, I I admire that that trait um, uh, in those who have that skill. But when a person is building a house, you know, it's not just a matter of throwing up sticks, right? Two by fours or two by sixes or whatever. You know, when they're in the process of framing, they have to think several steps ahead to the guys that are going to be doing the finish work, to the men who are going to be drywalling, to the people who are going to be, you know, hanging windows or doing roof, you know, laying up the shingles or laying the metal on the roof or whatever the case might be, you know. So, you know, when they're framing that house, they have to take all of these things into consideration because if they don't do that at the very beginning, then the consequences of that is that those drywall guys are going to have a really hard time hanging their sheets of drywall or well, the roofers are going to be off on their lines and so forth right uh, and it even goes further back from that from the the pouring of the foundation before the foundations even poured it has to be squared right right it has to be square and plumb and, and level you know everything has to be in its proper place from the very beginning of that otherwise when the guys come or the women come or whoever's doing the work come later, those trades come later, they're going to have a difficult time, right? And so that's the consequence of not doing something or not taking something into consideration at that time. It's going to affect somebody later on. And eventually it you know, might come back and affect the, you know, the, the concrete guy or the framer guy or somebody might get back charged. Well, in life, it's much the same way, right? If we don't set ourselves up and train train ourselves and to, to make certain decisions now, then we're going to have to deal with the consequences of our wrong choices, our impulsive choices, or even our inactivity in certain choices much later in life, okay? And the big thing that we're talking about here and focusing on is building a positive character because at the very least, you're going to have something to pass on to your child uh, when a person does have a child, right? Uh, you know, they're going to establish a certain pattern of behavior, which, as we, we know in scientific evidence shows, it builds into the genes. And you can actually pass those positive traits onto your, your child. Now, they'll have to be trained and educated, right, uh, as, after they're born, but you kind of give them a, a head start, a boost, so to speak, uh, when we learn these things, when the students learn these things, and they set them as a, a valued uh, way of behaving then it becomes a part of their their genes, their genetic makeup. Well, you know, William finished off last week on uh, page 88 and the first point there on page 89 there, but he was talking about some room to grow and uh, talking about the uh, impulsive decisions that are made uh, quite frequently, uh, you know, quite frequently. I mean, I, I can think of many impulsive decisions that I made in my earlier years, and I think most of us can, um, but <clears throat> you know, not having the, the understanding of what it means to be impulsive, it's easy to, to react that way. And as he gave the definition last class, impulsive means to act on emotions without careful consideration um, of the consequences of your actions. All right, you notice there, to act on emotions, which means there's not a lot of thought process, you know, going into governing how we should act so that we can respond. You know, now now we, we do thinking all the time. Remember, thoughts enter our mind, go in and out of our mind at the speed of light. But sometimes we have a tendency to ignore the rational thought and to go with what feels great, right? And for some people, it's retaliation. You know, people, some people, they thrive on getting even. Okay, well, remember what we covered at the very beginning of this class that the author heard in the you know, in, uh, in his presence, his father saying two wrongs don't make a right. And they never do. They never have. And they never will. Well, you know, once the person, once the student understands what it means to, to be impulsive, then they can work on carefully considering what the consequences of their actions might bring. And it might be a little cumbersome at first, you know, because they have to consciously you know, stop and think about what could this bring? At the very least, they're going to have to say, well, will this cause harm to me? Will this cause harm to, to someone else, right? Will this cause damage to property or, 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 or the environment or whatever it might be, right? 
and, it, and it's a little bit it takes a little bit it's like walking right the child that first learns to walk they do a lot of stumbling and falling but over a period of time it becomes really easy and so so do those thought process those thought processes they become easier and easier the more we apply them so we can quick go you know well nope not going to do that because uh it's going to hurt somebody right or it's going to break the rules okay um and, and it becomes a little bit becomes a part of their character and that, as they do it continuously of course they become a person of integrity so let's look over i'm just going to refresh our um minds here <clears throat> soldier place on page 89 we'll just go ro right back um, to lp4d real quick um and we'll read again uh, lesson plan six or procedure six excuse me not lesson plan procedure six just to refresh what we covered last uh, class there it says tell students that sometimes people act impulsively and say or do something they might regret uh, have students read the section entitled room to grow which was covered last class on page 88 of their handbooks and emphasize <clears throat> point it out make it very important that everyone makes mistakes but we must learn how to react appropriately in order to maintain our positive character. And William, uh, you know, he covered the difference between mistakes and choices. Okay, and because there is a clear distinction between the two, and a lot of people will generalize their bad choices with mistakes. You know, uh, like I accidentally stole that car after hot wiring it. You know, I made a mistake when I stole that car. You know what I mean? I, you know, I made a mistake when I, you know, did this or did that, right? They might feel that it was a mistake, but really they made the choice to do that. They acted impulsively is what they did, okay? Uh, and he gave a great example between <coughs> um, comparing the salt and the sugar. So it says there, um, but we must learn how to react appropriately in order to maintain our positive character. And just um, just to, because uh, we have an acronym that we'll cover a little bit later in the lessons there, that, that word react there, uh, it simply means to respond or behave uh, in a particular way in response to something. Okay, to respond or behave in a particular way <coughs> in response to something. Kind of like... Um, you know, the easiest thing you can think, you know, physically is when, uh, and I think we've all done this when we, well, most of us have done this when we were in school and science class, when we mixed uh, baking soda and vinegar, you know, you got a reaction, right? The response was the little volcano bubbling out white, you know, foamy froth that came from that, that was a, you know, chemical reaction between the baking soda and the vinegar. Well, sometimes you get those type of reactions when somebody's faced with a conflict, you know, someone steps on another person's toe, someone says something that offends them, right? And people tend to respond or react in a way that might be immoral, okay? Uh, but what we're wanting the student to get to the point is, is, is learning how to consider what the outcome of their actions will be and react in a way that will be moral or fall within the guidelines of the rules or of the teachings of building a positive character. And then the, some of the synonyms of that word react are, of course, respond, uh, behave, act, proceed, reply, or answer. Okay. All right. So let's, um, well, let's look at lesson, let's look at procedure seven, too, because we're going to be moving on. Yeah. It says, ask students, what are some benefits of maintaining a positive character and of course the answers will vary but might include uh, being known as a person of integrity and if they were paying attention right then they'll be able to uh, draw that from the previous chapters and it's not enough just to expect them to remember everything as a teacher we kind of really need to you know bring that those previous lessons back even though it's done through the lessons but sometimes we and you'll see it as we do this as we go through the the classes here you know we go back and we draw from the previous lessons and bring the minds back up to date because it's really easy to forget you know what was in chapter one or what was in chapter two when you're all the way in chapter you know four five or six so it's important to kind of refresh their mind on that type of uh, on the previous information that they learn uh, so they could be uh, known as a person of integrity <clears throat> Uh, being trusted and being looked up to as uh, we covered in the previous chapter chapter 3 on um, on uh, uh, Making of a VIP right uh, in that word imitate 
Uh, we can look at persons to imitate who model, who role model positive character traits, but also keep in mind that we could and should be those who others would like to emulate or imitate because we should be role modeling those positive character traits as well. And then have students turn to, um, Yeah, explain to students that uh, earning a, uh, back up a little bit. Explain to students that earning a great reputation is another benefit that comes from having a positive character. And then have students turn to page 90 in their handbooks and read the sec <clears throat> section entitled "Your Reputation Proceeds You." And stress that a great reputation is something to be treasured and carefully maintained. Okay, because again, you know, recovering maintenance, the maintenance or the maintaining of a positive character okay and of course maintaining means um, of course to take care of something uh, keep it safe keep it in great working order and so forth so let's look back at page 89 there we continue on here with uh, keeping keep the following list in mind here notice at the very top in order to learn from your mistakes we're going to make mistakes the students you probably don't have to tell them they know they're going to make mistakes uh, as they learn and, and work towards developing a positive character, they have to be realistic because developing a positive character is a goal that they should be setting for themselves. Well, in setting goals, one of the things we're going to learn about this is setting realistic goals. So realistically, they're going to make mistakes when you know in developing a positive character. But as we're going to cover here, you know they shouldn't get discouraged or down on themselves and um, you know beat themselves up because that can leave them in a situation or, or a mindset, a mentality of just throwing their hands up and saying, ah, forget it, you know, I just can't do this, it's just too hard. You know, I'm just gonna go back to the my old way. It was just way easier doing it that way, right? And it is easier just going with the crowd. You think about, you know, just take a look at that nature, for example, all right? There, most of us know about salmon. Uh, uh, William came from Alaska and he probably had, he'd probably talk about our Texas salmon, but you know, he probably had a you know salmon that was probably as big as a person. I don't know, you know, up there. Uh, but salmon, they tend to when they um, is it spawn or breed, um, you know, they swim upstream, right, to do that. And if you've ever seen a, a a river, especially you know the rivers that come off of mountains and the glaciers as they melt, and they're they're flowing usually pretty decent. And I've seen those salmon, those documentaries of those salmon swimming upstream. You know, they're not just going through some little trickle. I mean, they're going up small waterfalls and things like this and they're 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 very determined to get where they need to get to so that they can you know lay their eggs and you know bring forth more offspring for the next generation well it's not very easy and by the time they get there you know the uh, they're very very tired <laughs> you know they're very very tired and they probably just want to lay down and float down the stream you know but anything uh, you know it's been said anything worth having is worth working for you know, it's worth putting the effort in. And it's the same with developing a positive character. As we covered on page two, this is the road less traveled. You know, so like that salmon in the society today, it's like we're swimming upstream. You know, we're swimming upstream against the crowd, not going with the crowd, um, in order to reach a goal, in order to attain something greater, which in this case is the, a positive character, developing a positive character. All right, so let's look at number two there, because uh, uh, we covered number one last class, which is uh, acknowledge that you made a mistake. Uh, simply uh, the definition there, trying to justify a wrong by not being truthful with yourself and others will prevent you from taking steps for improvement. And that's very important, you know, as he covered there, you know, um, if, if we can't acknowledge that we made a mistake, and I knew people like this growing up that they, you know, they just would not, it was like beyond them to make a mistake, you know, and if it was pointed out to them, then you were like just totally coming against them, you know, uh, you know, for whatever reason. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with making a mistake. <laughs> Everybody does it. Now, it, it, get, it becomes a problem when once a mistake is pointed out to you and you're, you're shown how to fix it, that you stay in that mindset of continuing to do what's wrong, okay? I have to believe it was called insanity, you know, doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Um, and it might seem insane, <laughs> you know, why do you keep doing this, right? Uh, but if you can acknowledge it, right, 
then you can start the process of fixing the situation. Denying it, like they say, denial is not just another river in Egypt, you know, denying it just prevents you from taking the steps to fix the problem. So um, that word acknowledge means to accept or admit the existence or the truth to accept or admit the existence of something or whatever it might be or the truth the truth was yeah, I made a mistake I put the salt in there a cup of salt when I was supposed to put a cup of sugar you know saying well I didn't do that you know I, I think your taste buds are just off All right? that's not gonna fix the problem you're not gonna be a great you know probably not gonna let you cook a cake the next time you know if that were the case so you you acknowledge or you accept um, the truth that you made a mistake and then you start working on taking steps to improve it and this leads us to the uh, point number two there after we've done that then we want to use character to maintain character all right and for my my notes and my reference there I wrote there use positive character traits to maintain a positive character okay and of course that's you know, kind of goes without saying. That's what we're that's what we're working to develop here. But I just wrote there at the top before character positive and the word traits afterwards. But and this is something you can re again reiterate to the student um, as the focus of these lessons are developing a positive character. Use positive character traits to maintain a positive character. Okay. Um, it says if you did something that was irresponsible, and they give this example then be honest with yourself all right using a positive character trait right if you did something that was irresponsible well the first thing you know one of the things you can do is be honest yeah yeah I did something right you know I, I, I overslept I stayed up way later than I should have I knew I had a meeting in the morning and I you know I just goofed off or binge watched or whatever you know a television show when I should have been in bed being, being prepared um, you know, so it's my fault. I, you know, I did I did something wrong here. You know, or uh, if that was a choice, or even if it was a mistake. Um, then be honest with yourself and admit it, and then plan to never make that mistake again. Plan to never make it again. So once it's pointed out to us, because sometimes people do make mistakes and they don't realize what the mistake is. They don't realize what caused them to, you know, encounter this consequence. But once someone who does know points it out to them or they do some reading or educate themselves and find out, oh, okay, I see what I did now. Once they do know, then we can make a plan to never make that mistake again. Remember, as it was covered in last class, if you do it after the first time, it's not a mistake, right? It's a choice. It's a choice that we're making. So um, they're under use character to maintain character. Um, let me see here. Let's just look back to um, page 85 there just to kind of refresh our mind there. Use character to maintain character. And this is, you know, I thought this was a, a great statement here. <clears throat> um, and uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, oh, I guess the last paragraph. Last paragraph, first sentence there. It says, maintaining your character will sometimes require courage. Having knowledge, wisdom, <coughs> excuse me, and a plan will give you the confidence you need to stand your ground. Now, just looking at that first sentence, maintaining your character will sometimes require courage. It doesn't always mean, having courage does not always mean standing up against someone, you know, or to someone who might be challenging the choices that you make sometimes that courage is just in the fact of saying you made a mistake you know we made a mistake I made a mistake I made a bad choice especially if you were one of those people that I was talking about who never wanted to do any wrong who never wanted to you know admit that you were wrong it can be very humbling to say yeah yep yep I made that mistake <laughs> You know, especially if you're in a position of a, you know, of a leader or a parent or a supervisor or something like that. Uh, but you know what? One thing we all have in common here, regardless of, uh, you know, what position we hold in life, we're all human. I, I believe, right? We're all human. Okay. Yeah, we're all human, right? 
we all we all make bad choices at times we you know sometimes we'll allow the emotions which we're working to you know get control of uh to <laughs> bypass our thought process and we make impulsive choices so after that we just have to work on fixing it now we want to get to the point and we want the student to get to the point where they're not allowing their emotions you know to 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 be the determining factor of their choices but their thoughts and their thoughts need to be stayed on the rules that help to govern positive relationships between um, other people our interactions so it says there uh, admit it and plan to never make that mistake again in other words you will always have positive character traits to draw from now the only way that the student can do that is if they've been educated with those positive character traits and then after they've been educated with those positive character traits they will need to continue to rehearse them on a regular basis and I'm not saying they have to get up every morning and you know go through all their positive character traits but like we mentioned in pre previous classes they can simply make a, a, a positive character trait chart or just you know the just one positive character trait and what it means and just strategically place them in their room or a teacher could have them strategically placed in the room if you go into classrooms you'll see a lot of different things plastered on the wall uh, in elementary classrooms you'll see you know numbers and ABC's and um, the alphabet you'll see uh, colors and shapes and things like that um, as it was mentioned before when you walk through the halls of certain schools they'll they'll have uh, sayings positive sayings uh, there to remind the student of of a certain mindset that they should have uh, and well it's the same thing with these positive character traits the more we have them in front of us the easier it will be to recall them when we're faced with uh, a situation whether it's you know a conflict or, or whatever it might be so it says there um, admit it and plan to never make that mistake again in other words you'll always have your positive character traits to draw from now um, let's see here let's turn back to page 79 there just look back at the very beginning of the chapter there um, on, on the second paragraph it says maintaining your positive character means protecting and guarding yourself from influences and choices that could lead to developing negative character traits maintaining your character must be done notice here on a daily basis sometimes it must be done minute by minute okay and uh, if you look down to um, uh, this the next paragraph we'll just read the whole thing it says in this chapter you will learn that maintaining your character requires controlling your thoughts as well as being prepared to deal with any situation that could compromise your character all right, and then so you know we know that negative influences could be that it can be any type of frustration that comes up it could be a person or it could be just a situation um, but it's important that you know the, the student understands what it means to maintain their character and then how they need to go about doing it all right so so let's just look at a little a few other um, uh, points in this um, number two here we're on number two on page 89 it says if you did something that was irresponsible then be honest with yourself and admit it okay that word there admit <clears throat> it's kinda it kinda ties into uh, acknowledge a little bit there remember acknowledge means to accept or admit the existence or the truth of well the word admit there means to confess or be I'm sorry to confess to be true so to confess to be true or to be the case so to confess something to be true or confess something to be the case um, typically, uh, well, the dictionary says typically with reluctance. You know, I was covered last class. A lot of times we don't want to admit certain things that we've done. We don't want to admit that we made a mistake. We don't want to admit that we made the wrong choice. But again, you know, this starts the process of, of fixing the problem, right? Because remember, change starts not from with the, the other person doing something better. It starts from within. It starts with us acknowledging that we've done something wrong, saying, yeah, yeah, I did this wrong, and then making a plan to fix it, to do it right the next time. And it might be 20 years down the road before a person's faced with that situation again, but if they have set a plan, set their mind in advance, and continuously rehearse these things, 
it wouldn't matter if it was two minutes down the road or 20 minutes down the road they're going to respond in a positive way but again you know it's got to set your mind in advance uh, to maintain those characteristics that we're learning here and remember this is a road less traveled right it's not always easy but it's the right one and as we're going to learn as we get further into the the uh, the units here um, whether it's practicing self-control whether it's showing respect whether it's being responsible uh, accepting certain things uh, it might not always be easy but right it's the right thing to do and of course the more we do something the easier it becomes and man, this is a this is a learning process and and, it, and there's a what they call a learning curve everybody has that um, and everybody learns at different rates so as teachers we have to be patient we can't expect just because you know Bobby over here picked this up in five minutes you know that Johnny over here is gonna do the same it might take Johnny five days or five weeks to pick it up but we must continue to encourage and build up and help the student to learn and to grow um, so that they can see the value in themselves first and the value in the things that they're being taught here so that they will refer to them often because if they value them then they're gonna go back to them it's like a, a student who values a particular uh, uh, you know um, relative or, or a teacher or something you know when they have a question they're gonna go to them for advice you know well we want them to go to the teachers for advice is but we also want them to go back to this information for advice too because it has it there to guide them in the right direction so uh, let's see here so in other words you will always have positive character traits to draw from and again just remember that we covered a little bit of that on page 80 in um, setting your mind in advance I just wanted to see there because we're gonna we're gonna hit that again so I don't want to jump jump ahead of myself because we cover that a little bit later here um, yeah we'll just wait until we get a little further down all right let's look at point number three there <clears throat> it says ask yourself so after you acknowledge that you've made a mistake and then use character uh, to maintain character ask yourself what should I learn from this what should I learn from this All right um, remember what we covered about being optimistic and positive self-talk right um, a person who is optimistic and a person who uses positive self-talk uh, when they are faced with a difficult situation they very well might have this attitude this mindset well what should I learn from this if I made a mistake what is there that I can learn from this okay uh, because there is an opportunity to learn in virtually everything even the things that we think are just have just gone horribly wrong like the example was given <coughs> excuse me uh, last class or the class before about um, <clears throat> oh, Edison or was Edison that did the light bulb right you know uh, 10,000 times you know he just learned how not to make a light bulb 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb but he saw it he saw what he could learn from that and you think about this think about and, and this is a this is something that might take a, a while to grasp and a, and a student who has been learning the peaceful solution might not get this until many years later they might get it pretty early I don't know as, as adults we know that we we didn't typically value the things that our parents taught us until we were much older right and uh, we had children of ourselves and we were faced with the same situations that our parents were faced with and then we go okay yeah I see what mom and dad were talking about now okay and then so we we value that a lot more because we we understand it but you think about all this information that's given here to us because uh, we're all students in the collection of these books and the 50 teachers that came to put this together you know and I don't know all their ages but if they had an average age of 40 years of, of, of age you're looking at 2,000 collective years of experience right all rolled into a series of, of, of a few books that we can read and gain all that knowledge and work to apply it so that we don't have to make the same mistakes and bad choices that others have you know it's great to learn from you know somebody else's mistakes you know, if, you know if you don't want them to make mistakes but I would rather learn from their mistakes than to go through the suffering myself you know unnecessarily um, learn the right way to do it the first time you save yourself a lot of time and 
You'll save yourself a lot of hurt too in certain situations. But ask yourself, what should I learn from this? <clears throat> uh, which, you know, that statement in itself is a sign of, of a responsible character trait, right? Being responsible uh, in that situation. What, what can I learn from this? It says here, change your attitude about making mistakes. Remember, our attitude is the way we, we think and feel about something. But we need to, you know, we, we have to be mindful about our attitude, about, uh, you know, circumstances, situations, or even people, right? Because if we have a negative attitude about things, we're not going to be as willing to learn from it. Right, because we're going to look at it in a poor. When we look at something negatively, we go, "Well, what can that do for me? Or what can they they do for me?" Right. But when we have a positive attitude about it, you know, even if we don't fully understand something, we at least are willing to to be humble and learn. And that, and as we get into, um, we got a couple chapters before we get into you know leadership, right? Uh, one of the things, one of the positive attributes about a leader is they're they're willing to be trained they're willing to learn right a leader is going to make mistakes and a leader has to be able to say all right well what can i learn from this okay uh, because if they don't improve they can't expect the crew that works with them to improve okay um so it says change your attitude about making mistakes instead consider them as lessons to be learned and everything like we said before is an opportunity when, when we gain this knowledge here of the peaceful solution, uh, the student, you know, they might have a couple of quizzes or so the teacher might give them from the books and some of the, the test your knowledge information activities are given in there. But the majority of their tests, as it was mentioned, are going to come in their daily interactions with other people. Okay, so <clears throat> um, consider them these these trials, these tests, these setbacks, these pitfalls, these these mistakes. Uh, as lessons to be learned. Once you have learned them, just think about how much smarter you will be, right? And by that 9,999th time that he tried the light bulb, the next time he did it, he was like, man, I'm glad I stuck with it. Now the next light bulb, I highly doubt he had to do it 10,000 times, right? <laughs> you know, he knew exactly what to do next time. And it's the same way with us. When we finally grasp a concept and we learn something, now we don't have to go through all of that hardship and difficulty. We can immediately apply what we've learned to get that job done. In this case, to respond in a positive way, okay? To, to the mistakes that we made or, you know, to decisions that we have to make or to negative influences bombarding us as they do on a regular basis. So, um... Um, once you have learned them, just think about this, uh, just think about how much smarter you will be. And that's a great point there. Let's look at, um, let me see here. Yes. Look at number four there. All right. It says, don't put yourself down or call yourself names when you make a mistake. Don't put yourself down or call yourself names when you make a mistake. In other words, stay optimistic. Okay. The number two applies to number three and number four, uh, just like it applies to itself there. Number two, you know, use character to maintain character. Use these positive character traits to maintain a positive character. Yes, you're going to do something, uh, you know, that throws you off course a little bit, but don't put yourself down, right? Because <clears throat> words are very, very, very powerful. Remember what we covered all the way back in chapter two of uh, you know the effects of character within the family and we talked about how powerful words can be does that stop when those words only come from somebody else no right because who talks to us more than anybody else does typically we do you know we're talking to ourselves a great majority of the time right uh, we don't always move our lips that might keep that might encourage social distancing, right? <laughs> you know, when we're talking, but but we are constantly talking to ourselves. Uh, I, I know when I go through situations um, and, and I uh, and uh, respond or have to you know, respond to a conflict or have just dealt with the conflict, um, A, I'm thinking about 
the information that's presented here in the peaceful solution in order to to respond in a positive way and then afterwards I'm, I'm recapping you know I'm going over in my mind you know well you see you see how did I respond in this way okay well what is you know how does that compare to the peaceful solution did I do it the right way could I have done it a little bit better could I have changed my tone was my facial expression like how do you know so we're constantly evaluating ourselves and and speaking to ourselves and and we want to make sure that anything we say and do is building not tearing down in regards to building our character <coughs> even <clears throat> even in regards to negative character we don't need to be down on ourselves the more we focus on building the positive eh, the negative will eventually go away right because we're accentuating the positive and eventually the negative will be eliminated kinda like um, <laughs> kind of like uh, Google reviews, right? You know, you'll get, you'll have four or five or six or seven Google reviews that are great, and then somebody will go and write a bad Google review, and boop, there they are, right at the top of the list. You know, well, the only way to get that down is more positive reviews. And eventually, that negative review gets pushed all the way back to 10,955, right? Uh, and so it's the same thing. You know, we don't have to worry you know the student doesn't have to worry about their negative traits right they just acknowledge that they're there and then they work on building the, doing the opposite using character to maintain character as we covered in number two so if we're irresponsible now we'll try to focus on being responsible right and, and, and working at it from that point of view or that angle we don't have to put ourselves down they don't have to put themselves down they don't have to call them names and as a teacher especially we don't ever want to do that Right? We don't ever want to call the students' names um, unless it's by their name, right? When they, when they do something wrong or make a mistake or a poor choice. So don't put yourself down or call yourselves name, call yourself names when you make a mistake. Now notice here, this will only lead to feeling bad about yourself, <clears throat> and the negative attitude could leave you susceptible to influences. Uh, to negative influences and um, um, you know we covered a little bit talked about that a little bit before <coughs> and the importance of um, <clears throat> positive self-talk um, this word here is susceptible uh, it means uh, open subject or unresistant to some stimulus influence or agency alright open subjective or unresistant right now the words that we say even to ourselves are considered influences okay so are we pumping positive influences into our mind or are we pumping negative influences into our mind you know and and the more we say it the more our subconscious mind starts to believe it because our subconscious mind doesn't differentiate between you know the boss that put you down and you who are putting you down right so we want to always build up remember always build up these character traits are building blocks not destruction blocks they're building blocks to building and maintaining a positive character so susceptible means open subject or unresistance in other words you're not putting up a fight you're not even allowing uh, you're not even doing anything to prevent some type of negativity in this case an influence to go into your mind you know you just whatever comes will come and that's what it means when you make yourself susceptible when you put yourself in a situation like this with these um, uh, this negative self-talk this putting yourself down or calling yourself names yeah you make yourself um, more susceptible or open to this because you're devaluing a person is devaluing themselves so when something is not valuable eh, eh, you know that's just a clot of dirt I'll kick it right just kick it across the road but what if it was a nugget of gold they wouldn't be kicking it across the road right they'd be picking it up and trying to go sell it because it holds more value in their mind okay now if they were farming you know that dirt would be more valuable because you can't grow anything in nuggets of gold right it depends on the situation or the circumstances <clears throat> um, the word stimulus there people automatically think about checks but we're not talking about that it means uh, something that incites activity alright something that incites activity okay um, and the word um, agency there is a person or thing 
through which power is extended. Okay, so it could just simply mean a person. You know, a person can come when you're at your weakest and plant a seed of negativity in your mind, and next thing you know, because you don't value yourself, you've 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 uh, put yourself down. You've you've you know you've just been on this binging uh, process of of being the lowest that you can be, and somebody comes along and says, "Hey, you know what? When I'm in this situation, I just go I just go get drunk. I just go get wasted." All right. You know, the bar has all the answers, some people think, right? And next thing you know, boom, you're making an impulsive an impulsive choice, right? Um, and for some people, that could be their last choice. You know, they could get killed in a drunk driving accident, or they could be run over by the people who have passed out, you know, because they've been so down. You know, they got drunk, they passed out on the train tracks, and, you know, accidents occur, right? So we don't ever want to reduce or devalue ourselves uh, when things go wrong. And this is again, going back to setting realistic goals and reminding the student that yes, you're gonna have great days, you're gonna have bad days, but always always be trending upward like that graph we were talking about. You know, Always be moving forward in your development of, your pos of a positive character. And eventually those bad days, they'll be behind you. Like it was mentioned before, you know, people, you know, they, they resort to uh, permanent solutions for temporary problems in the form of suicide and, and, and harming themselves and things of that nature. So look here, um, it says, uh, even if you have made mistakes in your past that you now regret, it is not too late to change and turn your life around. Okay, starting now. Starting now, once this information is presented, a person can take it. Remember, knowledge is power, but they're going to have to put that knowledge into practice in their life in order to realize the benefit of it, right? Uh, it's like that accelerator pedal in your car. There's a lot of power behind it, but until you turn the key on and step on that pedal, right, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to utilize any of that power. You know, a student is not going to be able to utilize any of this information until they start to put it into practice, learn it first, and then put it into practice in their life. So um, um, it's not too late to change and turn your life around. Uh, again, can't go back and undo the past. Right? It's not like a, a word program where you can just hit backspace and delete uh, or, or, or the, the reset button or anything like that. But again, you can acknowledge that you made a mistake and then work towards fixing it. Okay. Remember, where there is determination, this is a, this is a great statement here. You know, I, I really, this is it's a powerful statement here. Uh, where there is determination, there is hope. You know, because a person could have the smallest amount of determination in their mind, right? And, and a great teacher is able to draw that out, right? And, and where there is even that smallest bit of determination, there's hope to helping that person um, improve their character. Right to fixing their problems. Sometimes people think, you know, crisis problems without conflicts, without without a, a peaceful solution, without a a way to fix them. But as you'll learn in this peaceful solution, and the more you learn it, and I'm sure many of you already have realized this, there are no unsolvable problems, right? Because the problem exists because someone broke a rule. <laughs> so all you have to do is use character to maintain maintain character. Find the rule that was broken and then fix it. And you'll start the process of fixing the problem. Okay. So if you were not taught the value of obtaining a positive moral character and you have been negatively influenced, you can learn from your mistakes. Okay, because remember, like we talked about before, people come from, as we covered in chapter one, uh, how character is developed and formed in, in chapter one and chapter two. Right, the things that are valued, the influences, the environment, the choices that we make, experiences, and so forth. Some people come from homes where there are, where there is a lot of violence, where there is a, where there is a lot of negative talk, where there is a lot of putting down. Some people come from homes where there is a lot of nurturing and care and love and so forth. Right, encouraging the student or the, or the child to be the best and do the best that they can, and providing them with the means to do so. Okay, um, but some people could have you know fallen into this category here of being negative in, negatively influenced you can learn from your mistakes so set your mind in advance right now 
to stand up and make choices that will build a positive moral character. Let's just quick <clears throat> fly back to uh, page 80 there. Um, under set your mind in advance. And it talks about here um, um, in the first paragraph, one, two, three, third sentence there, or third line there. It says, setting your mind in advance to maintain your positive character traits begins by first considering just how important it is to have a moral character. Okay, a person has to realize that. It's like they have to, you know, they have to realize the importance of, of obtaining and having a moral character within themselves. You know, we talked about um, uh, your, your uh, self-concept. Remember, we covered that in the, the previous lessons there. You're having a healthy or positive self-concept. You know, it goes along with developing a positive character. A person needs to have a healthy self-concept because um, you can kind of look at a, a healthy self-concept as um, you can compare it to something like a thermostat in a house. Okay, uh, Your self-concept is where you think you need to be. Okay, And the thermostat is where it thinks that temperature needs to be. Well, if you try to change, what's going to occur? The thermostat's gonna kick on and bring it back to where it's programmed to be or where it needs to be. Well, if a person has a, a negative self-concept, you know, and they you know, it might be told, hey, you know, you're great, you can do this, you know, you don't have to uh, be so hard or down on yourself, and they might go, oh, okay, yeah, that's great, yeah, I, I hear you. You know, when they leave and they have time to think and they're by themselves, they could go back to that way of thinking because that's what they've been trained in. So this is why there's so much. And it, when you break down the peaceful solution, you realize how in-depth it is because it works from the inside out in developing a positive per, per, uh, character within the person. It helps a person to understand about a healthy self-concept and to turn that negative concept around to a positive concept so they can realize, you know what, I can do this. Yeah, I might have grown up in a very dysfunctional family, but I don't have to allow that trend to continue. You know, I can become a person of integrity. I can actually become something. I don't have to repeat the pattern that my parents, you know, uh, repeated from their parents and so forth. Okay, and so when they realize that, then remember what we said? Where there is determination, there is hope. And that makes it easier on that road that is going to be faced with pitfalls and, you know, uh, curveballs and things swinging at you from one side and the other, they're going to have to be ready to uh, shuck and jive, you know, when they <laughs> when they are faced with the uh, life lessons. But on page 80 there, it says, um, uh, be, uh, look at the next paragraph there, the second paragraph at the top. It says, the next step is to make up your mind not to be influenced to do anything that will compromise your character. Uh, in other words, determine in your mind that no one, including ourselves, right because we do a lot of self-talk can talk you into doing something you know is wrong okay so this is the importance of uh, this point number four here not putting yourself down or calling yourself names okay let's look back to page 89 alright uh, it says also be determined not to repeat past mistakes as we learn from them then we move forward we move we move on from them Instead, focus on maintaining your positive character traits. Uh, do the best you can to avoid <clears throat> making mistakes by setting your mind in advance and being prepared um, to handle curveballs and pitfalls. But if you do make a mistake, don't give up on maintaining your positive character. Give yourself room to grow and consider them as lessons learned. Okay, and the, again, uh, it's the teacher's responsibility to reiterate in the in the student's mind that you know everything that they go through is an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to learn from their mistakes, uh, to learn from their poor choices, and to take what they have learned in the peaceful solution and and even ask them. You know, all right, you know, if if you have a class discussion, you know, in this situation where this mistake was made, what would you do differently next time? Right? And get their thoughts, get their input, see if they're, they're catching and they're grasping the information that's being presented. Because the more they do, you know, the more they're going to contemplate those things. So the next time that they are faced with something, and I guarantee you, once it's pointed out to them, they're going to be ready, they're going to be prepared. Right? Uh, then they'll be able to make a better choice.
Let's see here. Look at the last uh, statement next to the little piggy there. <clears throat> uh, it says, don't wallow in the mud. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and get on the right track to a true moral character. And you can look at that mud as all those negative things there, you know, the, the negative self-talk, the negative, you know, influences, the uh, impulsivity, the, um, um, you know, being susceptible, all those things that, 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 that will get you down and weigh you down. You know, it's kind of like, uh, it's like when a person, they, they learn the peaceful solution, they learn that they actually do have the ability to change the course of their life and what they need to do to do so, it's kind of like a big weight is lifted off of them, you know, and it's kind of like how we feel when we are at the end of the day, especially down here in Texas, and, you know, you're all sweaty and, uh, you know, nothing's untouched by the dust in Texas, you know, so you're all sweaty and gritty and dusty and, you know, you smell a little bit funny and your feet hurt, right? And you get home and you take a nice shower and you just wash all that away. And it's like a big weight has been lifted. Well, it's, it's the same thing with this information here. You know, we could be going through the, the most difficult week that we, we could encounter. And at the very end of that week, to add insult to injury, somebody or a situation comes up that tests our resolve. Now, you can wall her in the mud. You can just allow the week's trials or tests, right, setbacks to just push you right into reacting impulsively, or we could make the right choice, right, and be a positive example to that person in that situation, right? And even if they don't appreciate what we said, the very least thing we know is that we did the right thing. We tucked the road last traveled. Okay, and that's important that that you know we reiterate that to students because, you know, children in this this age group of what we're covering here, you know, in the you know 12 to 14, 12 to 13, 11, 11 through 13, 14 years of, of age, you know, they're very um, motivated by the influences of their peers. You know, they want to be accepted by their peers, and if they are afraid that they won't be accepted by making a right choice, they might negate making the right choice. So we want to encourage them make the right choice irregardless of what your peers might think eventually you know they'll see and they'll look up to you or even if they don't you know you will become a person of integrity so you know it's necessary that we remind them of this continuously because I can guarantee you students in society today are not hearing that enough you know they're not hearing that they can become uh, great you know greater than they are and uh, um, make a positive difference in uh, society so what we're going to do there, because we're a couple minutes to close, so we'll stop here on page 89. Next class will pick up on page 90, uh, and the next class will be 310, uh, uh, 310 Wednesday, 310 at 530 Central Standard Time. Thank everyone for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you in the next class. Have a great evening.